Hello and welcome back to uh, Beekeeping Courses with McKay, taking you through the entire season of beekeeping. We are at your first hive check. You've installed your bees, you think everything's going well, you released your queen, and now you're diving back in for that first hive check. I feel like once we get past this hump of like your hive is established, you can kind of relax a little bit and educate yourself a little bit more as your hive is going through like the spring blossoms and really pulling in a lot of that nectar and the pollen. So here's your first hive check, let's go through it. Before we dive into the four things that you need to look for in every hive check that you do, I wanna talk about equipment. The first thing you want, especially if you're on location with hives, is a bucket. I like a good five gallon bucket with like a twist lid on it. The reason why is because sometimes you can't put out your smoker and you've lit it too well, you're done with your hive check, you need to get back in your car and go somewhere else and the smoker is still going. So it's nice to be able to put it inside the bucket, twist the lid, smother it with oxygen and it, it dies. I can't tell you how many times I've driven around with the smoker hanging out the window as I drive around in my car. The second reason for that bucket is you want somewhere to put all the things you're scraping off the hive, either the propolis, wax that they're building in the wrong place. You're gonna tidy it up and clean things while you're there. And if any of that sweet like honeycomb or you get traces of honey fall to the ground, you're gonna attract a lot of other insects. So it's nice to have a bucket something, a small container, a cardboard box or something, that you can just throw all your crap in as you're working on the hive and then you can take it away with you. The next two things are more of like luxury items. I like to use them because I have these like really scrawny little skinny arms and it's hard for me to move heavy equipment. So it's things that are helpful is one is a frame grabber. And this is great because the frames can get really heavy, especially when they're full of honey and you can clamp it down on the frame. You can free the frame and slowly pull it out. This helps get a good handle on it so you're not going to drop it, but it also helps the whole removing the frame to go smoother. If you're jolting around the hive, if you're if you're shaking things, it aggravates the bees. So the smoothest possible hive check you can do is like best and the frame grabber is really great for that. The last thing is a frame uh, hanger, a frame display. I'm not sure exactly what they call it, but this helps when you're working with the hive alone because sometimes you need to hold two frames and you don't have enough hands. So this gives you a place to hang the frames on the side of the hive and you're able to examine them or go through other hives while you kind of set one frame aside. I find it really helpful. Now you're ready to approach your hive. You have all your equipment. You're ready to get in and do your first hive check. Now get your smoker going. If you don't know how to use your smoker, I did a YouTube video about smokers. So go check that out for best practices, what you're doing with your smoker. But now we're just open in the hive. This entire process, you wanna make sure that you're not jolting your frames around, that you're not doing jerky movements because the more you shake the hive, the more agitated the bees are gonna get. So try and do things smooth. This will probably be your first experience with propolis. Now propolis, the bees will fly around from tree to tree and they gra gather like tree sap and resin and they come back and they seal the entire hive, like any holes or cracks or crevices they seal it up inside the hive. And this acts as a medicine for the hive. If your hive has a lot of propolis, it's a great sign that things are going well. But it also seals your hive together. Like it's not the honey or the beeswax that's extremely sticky, it's, your, it's the propolis. Propolis gets all over your equipment, all over your stuff. In the summer, you'll find that it's very malleable. And then the, in the winter, it turns very brittle. And so you get your hive tool in there and you're gonna be prying things open. Just try and do things as smooth as possible. Your hive tool is going to be your best friend for this. Get that hive tool in there and any chance you can just slowly pry things open. It's, if you do it slow, it's gonna be fine. Now, as you go in your hive, the best way to do things is to find the side of the hive that has a little bit of a gap. If you remember that we've squished all of our frames over so they're nice and snug and you have a little gap on one side. We're gonna go through it just like a filing cabinet and take out that first frame, examine it, and then move through the rest of the frames. Okay, okay. Let's pull out the real hive here so we know what we're doing. Here's your frames. Feet are on this side. I would start with this side. Things are gonna start getting a little tight here. You know how with all these frames empty, there was a little bit of empty space here and I told you to squish it all over to make sure things were tight. As they build beeswax, as propolis starts covering this, it's automatically just gonna get tighter and tighter. 
So start with this frame. Now these are really easy to pull up. They aren't gonna be if they're covered in propolis. And so I would take my hive tool and I would jam it in between here and the sides. And then I would jam it in between each frame and just slowly just break it up a little bit. Frame grabber can clamp around here as you're working with your hive tool and then it's really easy to just pull that up. Now the thing with pulling up your frames is that all of this is going to be built out beeswax and empty holes that they are trying to fill with honey, with larva, with pollen. There's lots of things inside these cells, inside these holes that can fall out. So the second you go like this, you get honey dripping and it's chaos for the bees. You don't wanna do this. So the best thing to do is keep your frame on a vertical platform. So, you're, so you pull your frame up, vertical platform, the best thing to do, keep it eye level. Pull it up, pull it clear up so you can look. If you're looking at the bottom of a cell, pull it up, lift it up. The second you pull this frame down to your waist and you're looking inside the cells, that's the second you start turning it. And everything on the back here starts falling off. It's best to just hold it like this. So how do you look at the back? A lot of people, what they do is they'll go like this to look at the back. Well, that, that's <laughs> everything's falling out. You wanna keep it on a vertical plane. So here's what you do, here's the motion. I don't know why this is so hard for people to get down. I see a lot of beginner beekeepers that don't know how to handle their frames. So here's what it is. You're holding it up, you're looking at your frames, everything's looking good. What you do is you turn it, we still are on a vertical plane, and then you rotate it like this and you turn it back. So now you're looking at the backside. Do you see that motion? Anytime you are moving your frame, you're moving it like this and you can see both sides, all right? And then you, then you put it, then you just put it right back. How easy is that? Now, the reason I love the frame display on the side, the frame holder, is because I can take this first frame and I can hang it right here on the end. So that frame is hanging, it's hanging vertical, and I can proceed to go to the second frame. It's nice because pulling out one of these middle frames can get really tricky because you're working with propolis that's been all around the entire frame. But now you have a space where you can slide this over. You can just slide it over and then pull it out and then put it back, slide it all the way to the end, slide the second one over, pull it out, put it back. And so you're going through this like a little filing cabinet until you get to your feeder. Then you move it all back and then you put your first frame in. Make sense? Sometimes these frames get a little bit tricky to pull out and if you're trying to wedge it with your hive tool, you can pry into the beeswax and just ruin all the comb that they're building. So try and hook it against the, the wood and leverage it against the frame that's next to it. It kind of helps you get more of like a oomph to get it out. Okay, so what are we looking for? What on earth are we looking for as we go through these frames and are doing our hive check? Four things, you're always looking for four things. And sometimes if you're a really organized beekeeper, I am not, and I should be, but beekeepers will take notes on these four things so they can go back in their books and see how it is fluctuated with the season, with the dates, keep track of things. The first thing, the most important thing, is to make sure your queen is alive and well, that she's doing okay, that she's laying properly, everything's smooth. For you beginners, it's gonna be really tricky to find the queen unless she's marked. Sometimes that makes it easier. But even then, it's it's chaos in the hive. And it, you'll get better and better at finding the queen. But at first, we instead of getting an eye on the queen, we look for eggs. And that's an indicator that she's been there and she's been laying and everything's fine. So the best way to find the eggs is to go to the center of the frames. That's where the brood nest, that's where the eggs are going to be. And she does that because she uses honey as an insulator or as a protector for the eggs. So the frames that you'll find on the very outskirts of your hive will most likely be honey. And even like on the bottoms of the frame, it'll be honey. Think of it as like a big ball inside there. So you're likely going to start seeing eggs on the middle frames, on the frame that you potentially even left your queen on when you first released her. So you're gonna hold up those middle frames and you're gonna hold it with your back towards the sun. So you have the sun behind you and the sun is shining into those cells. That's the easiest way to see the eggs and you are trying to see the tiniest little white 
like grain of rice, but a little smaller than a grain of rice in the middle of all of these cells. And you'll get better and better at looking for eggs. Now, if you find eggs, that means that your queen is healthy and has been laying within the past day, right? But if you find larva, that means that she's healthy and she laid an egg or she's been laying several eggs within the past like three or four days. So it's good to see larva, but it's the best if you see eggs because it's the most recent indicator that she's been there and she's healthy. In later videos, I really wanna go into detail about the brood pattern and how exactly you see if something is healthy. Right now, I want you to look and just see if there's eggs and also make sure there is one egg per cell. If you have multiple eggs per cell, it could mean that you have laying workers. It also could mean that your queen is just having some trouble getting on her feet. The second thing you want to look at is if you, your hive is battling any disease. Now again, these are going to be like extensive like YouTube videos that we can talk about so many different things that are affecting the hive, whether that be other insects or disease, um, you know, improper like equipment is affecting things. And so you're going to learn all of that stuff, but for now it all seems very new. I want you to look at the hive and just see that it's healthy whatever terms that might be for you. I mean, obviously, if you've caught a ton of mold inside your hive, that's a red flag. If other insects are in your hive, that's a red flag. So just be looking for an overall general health. And I feel good kind of putting a pin in that at this point because I wanna go into more depth about diseases and it's hard to kind of do that in a simple video. Number three is you wanna make sure that they have a great food supply. Now the nectar flow is happening, so they should be starting to build up honey. And you might be able to see a watery, like glossy liquid down inside your comb and they're storing, they're starting to build up honey. I wouldn't quite check the box just yet that that's their food supply and take away your, your sugar water. Um, mostly because the longer they eat your sugar water, the less they're going to be eating the honey and they'll be able to build up a better storage of honey. So I would take a look at your sugar water make sure it's full. I would prepare to go to your hive with a little bit of sugar water to just top that off to make sure that things are good. But anytime you're visiting the hive, you want to make sure that there's a good food supply for them and that they're doing well. Order a pollen patty. We're going to be talking about that next week, but pollen is their protein. And after the nectar flow, there usually is like a boost of like pollen. I don't know why there's those two aren't simultaneous, why they don't like are out collecting pollen with the nectar, but it seems as though they have a nectar push and then they'll have a pollen push right after that. And if you get yourself a pollen patty to put in the hive, it gives them that protein if they're not be being able to forage for it. And the fourth thing that you're looking for, you probably won't have an issue this week, but it will be in the future. Hopefully it's an issue is space. So as soon as your box is 80% full, you want to put on another box. Now, the thing is that it's not 80% of all the frames. If they've only like started to build out the very last frame, you want to look at all the frames as an overall view. If it's about 80%, you want to put on another box. If they're, if they're crowded, they're busting at the seams and you're not putting on another box, they will swarm. They will 100% leave your hive to find something bigger. If you put on boxes too soon and you put on two honey supers at one time and they're not filling it and they don't, sometimes if they don't have the means to be able to protect all of that space and they feel like it's too big, they will leave as well. So you want to be very aware of your space, all right? When you get to about 80%, we're gonna put on a honey super and we'll talk about that in the later video as well. So those are the four things, all right? The number one thing you really want is to see that your queen is laying. But one other thing, I saved this frame because look what's going on here. They have built honeycomb on the bottom of this frame. Right here, you can see propolis being built up on the frame right here. This hive, this frame is kind of a mess. There's more beeswax right there. But honestly, this is actually pretty tidy. This is like the chaos that you're gonna start dealing with. What I would do as you go through every frame is make sure you're keeping it tidy. Like this is a little, but if you leave it for too long, they'll keep building comb or they'll keep, it'll get starting to get really sticky and really, really gross. So you take your hive tool and just scrape, just scrape your frames and tidy it up as you're going through every frame and put it back in. Make sure all your residue lands in the bucket that it's not around the bottom of the hive attracting other insects. But you want to scrape that all off, keep things tidy, so you keep things kind of organized inside your hive. You as a beekeeper in the fall will thank yourself for keeping things organized because it's just going to get 
to be a bit of a bit a bit of chaos a bit of chaos in there and there's your first hive check a lot of those things are going to be the same principles you use for every hive check but right now this early in the spring especially with a new installed hive you usually don't face a lot of like disease or dramatic things that you need to fix the only thing that I could see that would be like a huge problem is if the queen didn't take to your hive. So for some reason you don't find there's eggs there or um, yeah, you, you even find a dead queen potentially. So what you would do is call the place that you got your bees and get a new queen as soon as you can. Um, you don't wanna wait too long before before that happens. If you If they, if they don't have a queen, Search online, Google it. There's a lot of beekeeper supply places that raise solely queens. They're about 35 bucks to get a new queen and put it in your hive with the cork in it. Um, so the bees can acclimate to the new queen for a couple of days. And just like you installed in the very first day, you release her after three days and she'll be able to accept and be in the hive. Apart from that, your hive shouldn't really be dealing with too many serious issues like this early in the game if you've installed a brand new hive. Usually it takes a second for disease or spacing issues to be something that you need to get on top of. Next week, we're going to talk all about the Varroa mite. All of your hives have the Varroa mite. So it's just a matter of controlling the numbers and different options and different ways that you can do that. And we're going to start learning about disease. We're going to start learning about anatomy and kind of getting into more of like the sciency part of bees because you're a beekeeper now. When you're, at, when you're at dinner and you have dinner conversations, you need to be able to answer all the cool questions. So we're going to start getting into more of like the, the grunge and the, the technical side of beekeeping. So if you have any questions, leave them below. I've, I'm going to add links in the description to all the products I talked about as far as like the frame grabber and like the frame display. And if you have any other questions or want any other links, let me know. Thanks, guys.